Ready, set, action. Tonight's workshop is on building a uh, voice application. I just want to give you a little bit of history of why we're kind of doing this sort of thing. In 2015, when I joined 1323, I think on my second day, I was with um, Doug Cook, the owner of 1323, in one of our conference rooms, and I was like, what's that? Uh, this thing was talking to us, and, and he's like, oh, that's an Amazon Echo. And the next day, I bought myself an Amazon Echo because I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. Um, and then I um, learned how to build um, different actions on that and was really excited about that and really kind of got into it. It was like a sort of a frontier um, uh, pioneer type thing of like new platforms, and um, I got super into it and super excited about it. And then um, in 2017, we applied for South by Southwest to get in there to do a workshop, myself and Max and a couple other employees, um, including Morgan, and we got accepted and it was like, whoa. And then all of a sudden, now you think about now and like we've had like three sessions at South by Southwest, two with Laura, and then like in total, five with this team right here uh, doing voice workshops. And so it's been um, a pretty successful part of our company and super excited about it and really, at this point, I do nothing. It's all these guys. So um, well, we update it every year. Like, this is like this is primo new content. It is. It is primo new content. That's true. Um, so today we're going to focus on the Google Assistant, and we're going to do like a Mad Lib for um, creating horoscopes. So a little bit about 1323. Uh, we're an interactive uh, product studio located right here in downtown Austin at 506 Congress. Um, our team is small. We're under 20. Um, we're made up of designers and developers and then the leadership team. We conceive, design, and build intelligent software, everything from websites and mobile apps to more complicated platforms and design systems. And so moving on to the next team, I want to introduce everyone here. Uh, myself, Tom, I'm the technology director, and then we've got uh, Laura, who is a senior designer here, um, Max, who is a developer, and then Morgan, a senior designer. We're going to have some fun. We're going to build things, so get ready. We're going to first talk about voice user interface, and so I'm going to hand this off to Laura to take over. OK, so tonight, we're going to be building a VUI, or a voice user interface, together. So to get started, let's talk a little bit about what a VUI is and why they're important. So first, let's define an interface. An interface is the point where two systems meet and interact. And in this case, we're talking about the point of interaction between a computer and a human. And as technology has continued to, continued to develop, so have the ways in which we can interact with computers. And now, thanks to advances in technologies like text-to-speech, natural language processing, and cloud services, we now have voice user interfaces that make spoken interactions with computers possible. And over the past decade, we've continued to see a rise in the use and integration of VUIs into the products and services we're already using. Most of us started out by interacting with voice assistants on our phones, but VUIs are available in cars, for TV remotes, and even things like washing machines, because why not? And now we've progressed beyond that to purchasing the devices that you can only interact with through voice, like the Amazon Echo and the Google Home. The Google Assistant alone is now available on over 1 billion devices and is capable of controlling over 5,000 smart home devices. But perhaps what's most important is the number of U.S. households that own a smart speaker is predicted to rise to 55% by the year 2022. So in summary, with VUIs continuing to become more prevalent, learning how to design and develop conversational UI is a really important skill. Um, so Tom mentioned it a little bit, but I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth about what exactly we're going to be building in this workshop today. So like Tom mentioned, we're going to be mad living horoscopes, so you'll create your own action that does that. Um, we've created a set of templates that can be customized with your own set of nouns, adjectives, etc., cetera, um, that will create a custom horoscope for you every single day. Um, our action tonight is a little bit more complex, so any of the code you'll need tonight, Max has already written that for you, and we've got the horoscope templates and word banks to help get you up and running immediately. You should leave here today with a deployable action and the know-how to start creating your own in the future. When we started thinking about what we wanted to build in this workshop tonight, we had this idea to write out these templates and allow Google to fill in the blanks for us. It was a little bit of an experiment, so we decided to apply this idea to horoscopes because that felt pretty fun. And this is one of the first ones it spit out. Watch out, Aquarius. You and baby could experience something very calm soon. 
There's a signature moon on the horizon, and if you can withhold your funny bone, you'll swim with stars. <laughs> so we hope that y'all will have a good time adding your own words, and obviously you will create these extremely accurate horoscopes tonight. <laughs> So for tonight's workshop, we'll be walking through six steps. Um, Morgan and I will walk you through a few things that you need to know about designing for voice before Max gets you started with the tool setup. Then we'll add our zodiac signs while familiarizing you with the platform and the lingo. And we'll teach the assistant what dialogue it should be listening for. And then finally, we'll do some fine tuning and that will help you prepare for deployment. But before we start building anything, let's talk a little bit about designing for voice. So as with any interface, there's just a lot of design and planning that needs to take place before you even start building. So how do you get started with VUIs? The best place to start is with strengthening your understanding of the user. Understanding why, when, and how people will interact with your interface is critical to its success. User research is necessary when designing any digital product, and VUIs are no different. But what's great about this is that many of the tools we currently use to design the graphical user interfaces we're used to working with are applicable to co designing conversational UI. Starting out with user research, conducting user interviews, developing personas or archetypes will help you understand the goals, needs, and current pain points of your users. And tools like journey maps and use case matrices are useful in determining when and how users will interact with your interface. So you decide which tools are right for your process and your project. And with that, I'll hand it over to Morgan. OK, so let's talk a little bit about the prep work that we had to do um, before we could get into development. Um, there's more to the process, like Laura said, but we already had our idea, and we have our audience. So we're just going to jump right into the conversation tree. Whether your action is simple or complicated, ours is somewhere in the middle. You'll want to draw a conversation tree um, to map all the necessary interactions between your user and the assistant. We started really simple here, bucketing the main intents of the user in blue and all the possible responses in white. At the top, we have our open app intent, um, followed by a welcome response that ideally lets a user know exactly what they can do when they enter the application. And that part's really important for discoverability, but we'll get there in a minute. Down the tree, we have a user asking for a horoscope with, things, with parameters like signs and dates, um, followed by the horoscope response, which we just heard. And then moving over to the right, we have a help intent, we have a fallback intent in case something goes wrong, and we have a stop intent so the user can exit the app. So now that we have all of our flows mapped and tested, um, we have to switch gears a little bit to writing. And there are a few best practices that we want you to keep in mind when you're writing for VUIs. The first one is to make it discoverable. So without uh, visual interfaces, menus and hierarchy are essentially invisible and much harder to discover. So it's really important to consider a linear user experience and how one can navigate up and down through an action to avoid any missteps. But at the same time, we want to avoid those classic teaching methods popular with phone bots. You can do things like dropping hints in this first dialogue where you offer reminders when appropriate. Like, you can always ask for tomorrow's horoscope. Um, and if possible, you can add examples, like in the bottom one there, um, that help align um, users with expectations and minimize potential errors. So in this one, sure, what's your birthday? Mine is June 11th. This helps identify an appropriate format for the user to respond with. And then speak their language. Um, we took some liberties and had a little bit more fun here than usual, but we really do want to stress how important it is to write actions with your users in mind. So you want to use familiar words, phrases. You want to write at a sixth to eighth grade reading level, if possible. Um, and keep it simple. Avoid extra words, adverbs, qualifiers. Um, take out anything that you really don't need in there. But you really do need that Oxford comma. Um, some voice assistants are super finicky, and if you leave it out, it'll group the last items together, um, and it doesn't sound great. And then keep it accessible. Um, our audible recall is much, much worse than our visual abilities. We can't skim or scan process. We can't remember um, as much as when we just see it. So with voice, you want to make sure that you're putting the most important information first and that you're keeping it short and simple. Give regular feedback. There are two types of conversational responses that can go a really long way in confirming user suspicions. And the first is explicit. Um, this is the top example there, where it asks uh, for you to confirm that it heard you properly because it could have a more serious impact, like erasing your data, um, charging your credit card in a transaction, things like that. 
And then the other is implicit, and that's that bottom example. It's not necessary, but it helps provide a little bit of reassurance that you've been heard properly. So, okay, your alarm is set for 6 a.m. And then, of course, we have to put it to the test. And it's really important to constantly be taking this out into the field and making sure that you're always aligning with user expectations. You may think you know what users are going to say, but language is super complex, and we even are surprised every single time. But there are a ton of tools that you can use to test your VUI. You can use sample dialogues. You can use the conversation tree, like the one that we just showed you. You can use a simulator. We'll be using one tonight to look at functionality and pronunciation. Um, so test as much as you can and as frequently as you can. All right. Um, so we got to learn to walk before we run here. And we're going to start off with a little bit of an uh, introduction to the tooling we're going to use. Uh, before we start, we're going to cover uh, at a high level like two main dashboards. Uh, what is an action, you might ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, it's a top-level program, much like uh, an app on your smartphone or a program on your computer. Uh, there's a Spotify action, for example, for playing music or a 1-800-Flowers uh, action. And your actions live in the actions on Google uh, panel. And you can sort of think of this as the app store for your action. Uh, it's where you're going to name your action and edit metadata about your app. You can also use it to change the voice of your action. Contrast this with Dialogflow. Uh, and this is, this is a separate entity from Google Action because it can be ported to just like a myriad of platforms. And you can sort of think of this as the brains behind the operation. Uh, the actions at Google uh, dashboard sort of represents how uh, Google users will see your app when they pull it into their Google Home. But Dialogflow is where we're going to uh, sort of design the inner workings of this app. Uh, so let's jump in, shall we? Um, I hope you have your browsers open. And then you need to go to developers.google.com slash actions. Click go to actions console on the top right. And you will be asked to sign in or create an account. Now, this is super important for those playing along at home. Uh, if you have multiple accounts, make sure you use the account that uh, your Google Home is hooked up to if you have one, because you're going to be able to demo this uh, in your own house after this presentation. Uh, you're going to want to click Add Import Project. You'll probably have to agree to the terms of service. Um, so it's time to pick our project name. And this is our first chance to inject a little bit of personality into what we're, what we're building today. Uh, so your project name is kind of like a file name. Uh, and it's not necessarily what you'll say to open the app. It's sort of the front-facing uh, name of your application in the Play Store. So for example, we could have uh, Max's Horoscope uh, or um, Fortune Teller or just uh, My Ethos Action. Uh, and you can rename this later, so don't sweat it too hard. And this is what's going to be displayed in the Google Action Store, which is uh, sort of like iTunes for your actions. Or iTunes is dead now. Uh, we're going to go to the App Store. <laughs> and after you click this button, it's going to take a couple of minutes. So do not fear. Is everybody seeing a page like this now? The yeah. templates page. All right. Go ahead and select conversational. It's this little box on the bottom there. Um, and it's going to proceed to set up. OK. Uh, everybody should be seeing a window like this. Uh, you're going to want to click decide how your action is invoked. And now it's time to name your action. And this is going to be like your invocation name. So this is what, imagine you're in your living room. And you're going to, this is what you will say to your Google to invoke it. So it, there, there, there's a lot of guidelines uh, going into this. Uh, it needs to have two or more words. Um, you can't use things like uh, the or a. Those don't count as words. A is just a letter. Uh, so don't try to get wise with it. Um, you need to spell out your numbers. Um, proper nouns by themselves are a no-go. But as a general guideline, if I could summarize all of this, just Think of what is easiest for people to understand, regardless of their background or grasp on English. Like, accessibility needs to be a priority if you want people to inter interface with your app. You also get to enter a display name. Choose your voice. And go ahead and click Save on the top right. 
Now there's this helpful little play button underneath uh, underneath the display name. If you want to hear how your uh, app will sound when uh, Google reads it out to you. All right, we feeling good? Ready to move on? Okay, so there's going to be this category called build on the left there, and underneath it, you're going to want to hit actions. All right, uh, you should be presented with this panel, and go ahead and click add your first action. You're going to get another pop-up. Everybody loves pop-ups. Uh, click custom intent on the left there, and then build on the bottom right. And this is uh, this is just sort of a uh, selecting from a, a number of pre-built Google templates for these kinds of things. You can go ahead and ignore the Git horoscope intent. Like ours is gonna be way better. And uh, once you click this, you're probably gonna get kicked out automatically to dialog flow in a new tab. That's totally fine, uh, just like go with it. Uh, if you were not kicked out to a second tab, then go ahead and open one and uh, sign in to dialogflow.com. Remember, this is the uh, brains of the operation. You may have to go through another uh, accepting terms and conditions screen. Go ahead and click allow to give Dialogflow uh, access to uh, your Google account. Uh, more terms of service. Uh, has everybody read the terms of service? Accept it. It's time to name your agent and we need to briefly touch on what an agent is, and it's basically like the file name for the brains. It's separate from your invocation name. It's not even really a big deal. Um, but it helps to name it something similar to your action name. In fact, it's probably already pre-filled for you when you went to this page. And if you want to roll with that, like that's what we highly recommend. Uh, you can name it whatever you want to, as long as it doesn't have spaces in it. I like to call mine 007. <laughs> Okay, uh, click create and uh, give yourself a pat on the back because we've rounded the uh, second uh, section of this presentation. Okay, um, so now we get to get to interesting stuff and we're going to start with our uh, zodiac sign entity. And entities are ways that we expect data to come in. Um, for the programmers out there, you can think of it as sort of like an enum. Uh, an ordinal value, um, but it's basically just a format that uh, a variable will will come in that Google will process. Uh, and so we're going to define an entity for our zodiac sign so that Dialogflow can extract that from speech. For the most part, entities have two fields. They have a type and they have entries. So uh, for our animal example up here, uh, animal is obviously the type, and the entries may be things like uh, horse, goat, or fish. We're going to make an entity of type zodiac sign, and it's going to have uh, the signs themselves as entities. So goat and fish also, but uh, <laughs> Greek words. Uh, navigate to the entities panel on the left there. You should be seeing a screen that looks like this. So go ahead and click Create Entity on the top right. You'll be asked to name your entity, um, and you want to name it Zodiac-Sign, all lowercase. And um, there are going to be a couple of times in this uh, presentation where it's super important to get the case and the punctuation exactly right, because uh, our JavaScript code is going to do some uh, string parsing, as you'll see soon. And uh, if there's a misspelling here, then that's just like totally gonna trip over itself. And you should be seeing uh, a list of entries underneath it now. So go ahead and click the first row to uh, start editing. We're gonna start off with Aries. Uh, we're gonna go in alphabetical order. <laughs> um, so go ahead and enter Aries as what's called a reference value. After you hit enter, it should autofill as a synonym for itself. And like this is really cool like um, to sort of help natural language processing. I don't actually know what an Aries is, but for example, like for Leo, you could put lion as a synonym and uh, Google would be smart enough to uh, process that. Uh, so has, is Aries a synonym for itself already? It seems redundant, but this is super important for getting the entity to be recognized. 
we're going to take a little bit of time to uh, fill in the remaining signs right now. Uh, now, as you enter these, dialogue flow will probably reorder them so that they're in alphabetical order. Uh, that's totally cool. Just uh, get these 12 bad boys in and hit save. Um, saving, especially in dialogue flow, is super important because it actually updates the natural language engine. Uh, we're gonna cover that a little more in detail uh, later in this presentation. But um, basically, it's just like get in the habit of saving all the time if you're doing a voice app. Okay, um, so we're going to set up our uh, dialogue. We're sort of going to structure how a conversation will happen with our voice app. And we're gonna start by uh, adding our horoscope intent. And y'all might have caught this uh, word a little bit earlier and wondered what on earth is an intent? Uh, well, an intent is sort of like a phrase that your action will listen for. And uh, so if you sort of wanna think of like a call and response kind of model uh, for your voice app, then an intent is going to be the call. This is what the user says to initiate something within the voice app. Generally, these, uh, like Google and Alexa, will have sort of like keywords that they'll look for. Uh, and so a lot of intents have like restrictions on what you can say. Like you can't just say like, you can't have an, an intent that's quit because that will override the default like quit thing. Um, so you can sort of think of uh, things like quit or stop as keywords that you can say at any time to, uh, to stop your in, uh, action once it's opened. So different platforms kind of uh, employ different models for how voice apps are opened. So for example, um, with Alexa, um, it's all sort of done in one fell swoop. Like you're sort of at the home screen and you will just say, ask Alexa for my horoscope. What we've seen so far in Google and Alexa is that there's really no way to override like the system commands. So things like okay, G-O-O-G-L-E, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, Alexa will always take precedence over your app. And so you can say, hey, Google, stop. <laughs> and, uh, and it will just like cancel any, any intent or any context that the app has so far. So, um, intents can also contain parameters like quantity and time, and Dialogflow is smart enough to extract these from your instruction and provide them to your programming logic. There are also predefined intents, and uh, these are those uh, sort of higher level uh, backup commands that are present in every app, but that you will still be given the opportunity to program. So the first is the welcome intent. If you think of uh, opening an app in Google like you would an application on your computer, uh, your, st your welcome intent is going to be what's read out when the application opens. So uh, a hello, a hello message. Uh, contrast this with fail uh, fallback intents and um, these are for whenever your uh, voice assistant doesn't recognize an intent. And so it's, uh, it, it will give an error message and perhaps even like prompt the user for uh, what it's looking for next. So for example, like, sorry, I don't recognize that sign. And this is sort of like a catch-all bucket for all the intents that uh, Google doesn't recognize. And this is gonna make a lot more sense once we sort of dive into the panel and customize this ourselves. Now you can't have a one-sided conversation with your Google Home, that's no fun. Uh, so we also have responses, and in the call and response model, who wants to guess what responses are? Their responses. <laughs> okay, so this is like what your, what your Google Home will say back to the user. Uh, it's super important to be very explicit in your responses to let users know where they are at all times or if there's been a problem. In our example coming up, uh, your horoscope will itself be a response. Let's uh, go to the panel called Intense on the uh, top left there. Once presented with this panel, you can go ahead and click Create Intent and you'll be presented with the option to name it. Um, so this is uh, this is opportunity number two to uh, definitely not 
screw anything up with the punctuation or capitalization. So make sure you get, get horoscope, a uh, title case with a space in between, and click save. We're gonna scroll down a little bit and click add parameters and action uh, after doing that. An empty row should appear uh, above this little form right here. And you're gonna want to enter at zodiac dash sign in the entity field. Because we already created an entity like this, it might autofill it for you. And including the at sign links the parameter to the entity that you created earlier. Um, you're gonna be asked to enter the parameter name. And uh, just like before, but without the at sign, just enter zodiac dash sign. Check required and hit save. We're now going to add a training phrase and get sort of into the natural language processing of this thing. So a training phrase is an example sentence that your action will listen for when deciding which intent it wants to invoke next. Go ahead and scroll up to add training phrases. It should be right above your action and parameters. After clicking this, you'll be um, presented with the form to add a user expression. And um, we're gonna do what developers like to call a smoke test, which is just where we verify that the connection has been made for what we want the connection to be made through. Um, and it's not gonna be flashy, it's just gonna, it's just gonna be a proof that things are working thus far. Um, so, for our uh, first user expression, you want to type uh, Aries and press enter. Just Aries. Uh, it's, we're gonna start really simple here. And if you did things right, Dialogflow should know to highlight the parameter and link the two. Ensure your parameter name is still zodiac sign. For whatever reason, sometimes it changes. We have not been able to debug this out. So just double check that um, in this parameter name field that the name is zodiac dash sign. And if so, click save. It's time to test. Okay, so how this smoke test is gonna work is that we're going to enter a different sign than Aries. Um, I always like to test with Leo because it's only three letters and I can spell it. Um, so go ahead and enter whatever sign on the top right there. And if things went right, you'll see not available. <laughs> you'll get an error message. But you'll also get something more important, which is that it should recognize the intent. It should say get horoscope right under that. So that not available means that the intent was recognized, but we haven't defined a response yet. And so we're just like locked and loaded to go ahead and add that response in the next step. It's time to prep for deployment. That's right, we're almost there. We're just prepping right now. Uh, we're gonna move on to fulfillment. Um, so fulfillment is just a fancy word for saying uh, code to uh, make it do say out what we want. Um, so it's a web service uh, or some other logic housed in Dialogflow that takes what you said and responds accordingly. And we're gonna put that in right now. So uh, go back to the get horoscope intent. Scroll down uh, underneath like the action responses and click enable fulfillment. And you should be prompted with a little checkbox. Uh, check enable webhook call for this intent and hit save. Now in this case our webhook is uh, just gonna be a little bit of dial uh, JavaScript that sits there in the dialog flow console. And you'll see what I mean in a second. Uh, make sure you click save and uh, navigate to the fulfillment tab on the left there. Okay, um, I hope everybody is seeing a page like this. It is time to check inline editor. And that should like open up and enable that whole dialog box beneath it. It's time to open another, another tab and visit the link we have for presented up here. And this is gonna have um, the code that's gonna generate your horoscope right here. And we're gonna go into this at detail at the end of the uh, presentation. Everybody should be seeing this screen. Go ahead and copy everything that you see in here. 
Just do like a command A on this bad boy. We're gonna pop back over to dialog flow and go back to the inline editor that you saw earlier and replace everything. And I mean everything in that editor. There should not be a single line of, of dialog flow template code remaining in this after you paste your code in. And then click deploy. It's gonna take a, about 30 seconds for the button to say deployed. But uh, unfortunately, it still takes a minute or so for the webhook to deploy, even though uh, dialog flow says it's done. Dialog flow has registered the, uh, the new code, and then it's just like deploying to every single dialog flow server that's out there. Because there are a couple, like depending on what country you're in, you might hit a different uh, processing server. OK, so uh, we're going to go ahead and jump in and start testing right now. Uh, so let's do. Uh, let's take it personal. Type your sign into the right side right now, and see if you get a, a horoscope back. I want to hear y'all play them. Turn up that volume. Crank that. Yeah. Scorpio, the time is now. You can feel it in your thumb. The feeling of sadness has been rising for some time now. Amen. Be on the lookout as generous Solaris makes an appearance in the coming weeks. The season of the sharp lover is upon us. Don't worry, uh, the voice you selected for your Google Home exists outside of dialogue flow. So uh, when we demo this like for real in a second, uh, you're gonna hear the voice that you picked. All right, um, so we got the connection going. It's time to add an optional parameter. We're in the home stretch, y'all. And so this is sort of like exploiting dialogue flows, really flexible natural language processing to uh, provide extra information if needed. So right now, your horoscope is just generated for today. But um, what if you wanted to hear your horoscope on the day you were born? Go back to your get horoscope intent. Uh, find the action and parameters section again. This is where you entered uh, the slot for your zodiac sign. And uh, you're going to want to enter a new entity. And it's going to be called at sys.date. And uh, click save. Your uh, dialogue flow is not going to have any vector with which to process that unless we enter more training phrases. So we're going to do that right now. Uh, go back up to your training phrases. And you're going to want to enter another phrase. And uh, let's call it a Capricorn tomorrow. And then hit, uh, hit enter. Dialog flow should match tomorrow to the date parameter. And uh, this is like one of my favorite things about the whole engine is that when you enter in like an entity under the sys.date slot, um, it knows to parse things like tomorrow or even like Thursday, or you can give it like an explicit date, like your birth date, like literally the day you were born in the year. And those are all the same to Google. It's just parsed as a, as a date time. Make sure that it matches tomorrow to the date parameter from your training phrase that you just entered. And click save, always be saving. All right, uh, I hope y'all are ready for some uh, real astrological uh, mind melding right now because we're gonna find out the horoscope from the day we were born. So enter your sign and then like your birthday. Like my birthday is February 2nd, so I entered two slash two slash um, 1975. That's, that's the year I was born. That's when I was born. Um, we're going to take a couple minutes to improve the natural language performance now. Uh, natural language is how computers process uh, free flow speech into bits and bytes that uh, our programs can recognize. And we're going to start by adding more training phrases. Now, this is sort of where you can uh, this is sort of where you can be the artist here. Um, we ask that you get creative in your training phrases, but that you have Definitely this first one right here, underlined, what's my horoscope? And we're going to use that to uh, define a follow-up intent in a second. Um, you'll see what that means. But you might notice that this first intent doesn't have any sign in it. Um, so now 
Go back to your action and parameter section and find at zodiac sign. And next to that, you're going to want to click on define prompts. And what we're going to do right now is uh, define what's called a follow-up prompt. And this is what's read back to the user if, um, for example, I just say, what's my horoscope? And there's no sign given. Like, it can't give you a horoscope without a sign. It's required. So uh, we're going to program, like, a phrase that Google will say back to you to say, hey, like, what is your sign? So why don't you go ahead and enter that? Um, what is your sign? You can enter a couple of, um, of follow-up prompts. If you enter multiple, uh, Google will select one at random. Close that window and go ahead and save again. Okay, uh, it's time to test again, but we're not gonna enter a sign this time. So just type, what's my horoscope there on the top right? And you should get a follow-up prompt. What is your sign? If you put in bad words, will it say the bad words? Like, You know, um, so things like ass, uh, it can say, because that also means donkey. Um, I'm pretty sure it says hell, but if you say the S word or the F word, it will actually like bleep it for you. It's crazy, yeah, I know. Uh, and we're gonna integrate it with your Google Assistant. And this is like the crucial step across the threshold that will get this thing running on your device at home so you can impress your friends and appear smarter and more attractive to them. Select integrations on the left panel. It's that little thing that looks like a recycling logo. Um, select Google Assistant. Uh, if you don't see it, it's the gigantic box on the top there. Uh, and you should be granted with a window like this. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure you check auto preview changes, and this is crucial. Um, this means that anytime you update Dialogflow, it will instantly propagate to uh, everybody who's downloaded your skill. Uh, so make sure this is checked and click test on the bottom there. And it's gonna kick you out to another window. You'll be taken to the action simulator. And there's a field down here, the input field. Your app may be opened already, but if not, yeah, talk to uh, your display name. Uh -huh. It's like music to my ears. Hi, how are you doing? Hello, how can I help you? All right, y'all. I think we're pretty much at the end of uh, the presentation. I want to thank you all for coming. And uh, if you have any questions, we're here to help you. And if you're online watching the video, please feel free to email us at uh, tom.hudson at 1323.com. And uh, we'll get back to you. All right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. We love you.